For my first time attending Sundance Film Festival back in the spring, I started out with a bang. First out of the gate for me was the psychological horror sensor. I watched it later at night, and then I did have some trouble falling asleep. Film sensor Enid takes pride in her meticulous work, guarding unsuspecting audiences from the destructive effects of watching the gore-filled decapitations and eye gouging she pours over. When Enid is assigned to review a disturbing film from the archive that echoes events from her hazy childhood memories, she begins to unravel how this eerie work might be tied to her past. Now, this is a wonderfully told story of the descent into darkness and madness. Sensor had great themes of obsessive grief combined with sort of a savior complex. Enid is attempting to save the world from violence and evils when she feels responsible for the loss of a loved one. Her sense of duty to protect is just amplified by guilt over her inability to recall details of the long-ago disappearance. Neve Algar gives a stellar performance. She starts off confident and driven, and then transitions to obsessed and grief-stricken. And still driven, but just now, it's not in a positive trajectory. And I really enjoyed how Enid progresses in her obsessiveness. At points, she's like an addict, needing to just get her fix, regardless of the risks. And it's not just displayed through her actions. Her appearance begins to transform as well. We see the toll that her life and emotional state are taking on her. She even has friends reach out to her to offer help, and she rebuffs them. You can't have a problem if you never admit you have a problem, and therefore, eh, you don't need help. I love the cinematography. There are a lot of following shots hidden in shadows, and it creates this uneasy, intense feeling. It left me expecting something to jump out at us, and lots of grays and other drab colors also dominate the screen, but then they're punctuated by the actress's red hair or the white nightgowns, and of course then, you know, just all the bright red of the blood. There's also a lot of symmetry to the shot choices, and whether it's following or leading Enid down dark paths, she's dead center in the screen. And I also like how the camera follows her into dark hallways and passageways, but leaves her backlit so she's only silhouetted. I mean, it kind of makes her a stranger or unknown to us in those instances. Now, this is a pretty quick watch at only 84 minutes, but they do pack a lot into that short time. There is a tense and strained relationship that Enid also has with her parents. And even her co-workers notice her change in persona. She begins to act more erratic and at least out of the norm for her. She's normally very detailed and not afraid to work late because she believes in what she's doing. Enid believes that she's making a difference and making the world a better and safer place. Her story begins to mimic a news story, which then begs the question of does her job really have that large of an effect on her? Now, when I was pursuing my mass media communications degree, one of the classes focused on media. Mm, duh, right? But specifically, it was the studies that were done in the late 70s and into the early 80s that looked at violence in media and its effect on young viewers. And this has a similar backdrop with Enid as a censor deciding what should be cut to make a film less objectionable due to the violence. But the film also subtly addresses the effect of watching all of these films has on Enid. Now, there's a point in the film that involves Enid's identity and a news story but I didn't see that the story addressed how it came to be. There's also a moment where Enid is identified as a censor by the media, and the question is even raised at how the media knew it was her, but we don't get a resolution to that question. And while it's not wholly important, since they did raise the question, I do want to know the answer. This is Prano Bailey Bond's feature directorial debut, and she delivers a powerfully messed up story. And I say messed up in the best way possible. Now, the movie isn't a mess, but the story is jacked up psychologically and might stick with you for a bit. The beginning of the film shows some gory violence, and then it shies away from showing much more as Enid watches the films to censor. We hear sounds and screams, but we're shielded from the full force of that violence. But don't worry, more insane violence comes late in the film. And it does fit. And the violence isn't exploitative just to show violence. It's used for effect, and it really comes at the appropriate time in Enid's character progression. I felt the end is done uniquely and wonderfully. And at first, I wasn't sure if I could trust what I was seeing. But then there are visual clues to let my eyes and brain reconcile it all. It really is a great ending. And it is satisfying. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and some gory and brutal violence. I give Censor four out of five couches. What's a particularly violent horror movie that you've seen? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.